Ooh, another thrilling win in Atlanta where it seems like Tom Brady owns that franchise. I think now he's 10-0 and against them, which is one game behind, like, uh, I think they said John Elway is 11-0 against, I forgot who, and then um, Andrew Luck was 11-0 against the Titans. So, hypothetically, if Brady plays again next year, which he will because he still has a contract with us, and goes 2-0 and against the Falcons again, then he will have the most wins, most undefeated, most wins without a loss against uh, uh, any other team in NFL history, which is crazy to think about. But before I get into my reaction, if you are new here, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. I'm Rami B and I post weekly Buccaneer reaction videos. If you see me looking to my side, I have stats up to make sure that I am saying things uh, with accurate stats and all of that. So our Tampa Bay Buccaneers are now nine and three. Um, I don't know how it works in the tiebreaker with Green Bay because they're also 9-3. and three. I think we're still third seed, but I could be wrong. 30-17 uh, win against the Falcons. We are now 5-0 and at home and 4-3 and three on the road with uh, three more home games and uh, three more uh, three, three home games and two more road games um, coming up. So, hypothetically, if we go 8-0 and at home and maybe 6-4 um, and four on the road, or, I'm, I'm doing math all wrong. Uh, five and four on the road, we should still be uh, 13 and four, but I think we'll do better than that. I'll get into that later. But the Buccaneers had 425 yards of total offense, 368 passing and 57 rushing, while the Falcons had 380 total yards of offense, 259 passing and 121 rushing. Tom Brady on the day was 38 of 51 for four touchdowns and a pick. Overall, a pretty pretty efficient day, uh, moving the ball uh, to everybody. I think he had 300, I, I missed the yardage, but I think he had over 300 uh 60 yards passing, uh, maybe 370. Um, but yeah, a uh, very efficient day from him. That one pick was that stupid, stupid play call at the end of the first half where we threw that first uh, first down wide receiver screen to Godwin. He got stopped for like a yard, if that. Then we threw it to Fournette on a stupid swing pass because that's what we always do now. And uh, their, I think it was their linebacker, was it their defensive end? Uh, I think he saw it and read it all the way and just kind of caught it. Had like a two yard uh, pick six right there. Um, but that made the game much closer than it should have been. It should have been, uh, even if we didn't score there, it should have been a 2010 halftime lead. Uh, but yeah, uh, so, but overall pretty efficient day, four touchdowns. He spread the ball around to, I think, nine different receivers. Um, can't really complain about that. Fournette was 13 rushes for 44 yards. Godwin had one for nine. Giovanni Bernard, one for three. And Rojo, one for two. Not an, uh, not an effective rushing day overall in our offense. Receiving-wise, though, Godwin uh, led the team with 15 receptions, which is a franchise record, and the most catches by any player in a game this season in the NFL. He had 143 yards. He was pretty much the workhorse. Evans had seven catches for 99 yards. Would have loved to see him get like another wide receiver screen, just put him over the 100, but it's all right. Um, Gronk had four catches for 58 yards and two touchdowns. Fournette was seven catches for 48 yards and one touchdown, which was a beautiful one-hander um, on our first opening drive. And then Bray had one catch for three yards and a touchdown, which he jumped over a defender. I thought it was Gronk for a second, the way he got came down with the ball, like he jumped fingertips and you know, all of that got it. Defensively though, we held Matt Ryan to 30 of 41 for 297 yards. Um, no touchdowns on his end. Cordell Patterson like shredded us in the run game, 13 rushes for 78 uh, yards. Mike Davis had four for 32 and a touchdown. Um, they had a pretty efficient running day, rushing for over 100 yards against us. On the receiving, receiving end, Russell Gage had 11 catches for 130 yards. Kyle Pitts had four for 48. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus three for 44. Mike Davis had four for 37, and nobody else had over 30 yards. Their offense was not that effective. They only virtually scored one touchdown on offense, which was um, the Gage, uh, not Gage, sorry, Mike Davis rush. Um, I want to say it was in the first drive, their opening drive as well. We did have five sacks on them. Sue had two sacks, Vita Vea had two, and Cam Gill had one, and then we had one uh, forced fumble by Desir, and then it was recovered by um, Carlton Davis as well. Um, so I think it was, the turnovers was one each. Um, and I think uh, Grant Stewart forced a fumble, but they recovered it as well. So uh, defense was not the best today. Jamel Dean went out with a concussion and then uh, Sean Murphy Bunting went down at the end of the game, but he, he continued and Carlton Davis, I think once or twice, went down and had to miss a play or two. Uh, but overall, pretty effective game. I, I wasn't worried about the Falcons. I know they play us pretty well, but we always end, seem to to pull off uh, a victory against them. So uh, nine and three now, we're in control of our destiny. I think, that, like I said, Packers are nine and three and Cardinals are 10 and two. So there's still a game ahead of us. I don't know what the tiebreakers though and all of that. Um, and the Cowboys are a game and a half behind us. Currently, we are sitting comfortably with a four game lead on in the NFC South. 
Um, I think if the Saints and Falcons lose next week and we beat the Bills, we hypothetically, I think, maybe I, maybe I don't remember exactly, we pull off the division win. If not, um, if the Saints lose and the Falcons lose and then we beat the Saints the week after, I think we have the division locked up. Uh, but overall, you know, very dominant performance in that end. It's glad to see uh, um, Brady kind of getting back into shape and into form. Um, next week, we got a difficult, difficult, tough home game against the Buffalo Bills. However, they haven't really been playing as themselves lately. They lost to the Jags, but they did destroy the, the Saints on Thanksgiving. So um, definitely going to be interesting to see. Brady typically owns them historically, and maybe he still will. Um, the Buffalo Bills have been very inconsistent this season. They started off very dominant, and then they kind of just fell off. And they're like winning some, losing some. They're second place in the division of the Patriots. Um, so that should be a very good game. I think we pull it off because at home I think we're scoring over 35 points a game And I just don't see them being able to score that much score that much against us um, I think Jamel Dean being hurt is definitely gonna hurt with the concussion um, I think most players I know they used to pass the concussion protocol, but I think most players miss one to two games anyways with a concussion So I'm not gonna uh, Depend on him returning for that. But yeah, I want to say overall very dominant game on our end offensively We struggled a little bit uh, we had moments it's like we either are super efficient and we're going down scoring, nobody can beat us, or we end up have, making stupid mistakes and can't get out of our own way. Um, I would love to see Mike Evans get the ball more. I know he had seven catches for 99 yards, but there was a couple times where he had single coverage and there was no, uh, they were playing one safety and who was, you know, either in the box or um, shading over to the other side and Brady doesn't even look his direction. I think we have opportunities for some deep balls. There was that one deep ball down the right side that Brady overthrew um, Evans had beaten the corner and the safety was coming and, and Brady just kind of overthrew it. Had he maybe thrown it, you know, two, three yards behind, it would have hit Evans before he would have even gotten hit by the safety. But I would like to see Evans definitely involved more. Um, they did try to involve him near the end of the game a couple, I think the game went to him three or four straight times. But yeah, can't complain about the, 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 the game. Another 30 points uh, we scored and I know we're leading the NFL in points uh, per game and points overall. So definitely good to see. And yeah, Bucks Nation, comment down below what you think of the game. Um, and how you feel about the Buffalo game. It's definitely going to be our hardest test the remaining of the, the, the remaining uh, season on, on our schedule. So um, we have Buffalo at home, Saints at home. I think we go on the road to Carolina. We come and then we're on the road at the Jets and then we come back home for Carolina to end the season. So outside of the, the Bills game for sure is difficult. Saints, who knows? I mean, they play us very well. They beat us with Trevor Seaman. Seaman, Seaman, I don't even know how to say his name. Um, when he kind of came in and, you know, of course we weren't game planning for him, but who know, who knows now if he's going to be playing or it's going to be Taysom Hill, but they should not be able to beat us at home with the way that we've been playing um, at home and scoring points pretty much at will. Uh, AB's out for three weeks and same with Mike Edwards. It would be good to have Mike Edwards back because he is a ball hawk and he's always around the ball and causing turnovers, but um, we'll definitely miss him against uh, Buffalo, but I think we'll be all right against the Saints and AB will be back in three weeks. He misses this week. Bills, he should be back for the first Carolina game, but I wouldn't rush him and, you know, I'll wait until the playoffs. So, yeah, let me know what you think down below. And as always, let's go Bucks. Let's go Buck Nation. Dominant win, 9-3. and three. Let's continue and make it 10-3 and three next week. And as always, I am out. Let's go! You a bucket.